Welcome back to a new one on this channel and in this one we need to talk about the loud split. So the loud split is a very uh, easy device to understand. It's a little bit funky at first but then once you get the idea it's just super simple and you might use it for different things, mixing, mastering or maybe for creative purposes. And we can do that, we're gonna create some sounds and fool around with this but first I'm gonna break down the whole device. So I have a synth right here and on this one I'm just using a saw filter all the way up and I'm not doing anything special. It's just gonna be a tiny boring saw. If you think about it, when you have a sound, everything starts somewhere, which is, you know, silence like we, the one we have right now. And depending on the sound, it will rise slowly or go, you know, up in volume in this case until it reaches its maximum volume. Now, if you think about this, when we have a sound, everything starts somewhere, which is pretty much silence. So when I play a key, the sound might start super fast or will slowly ramp up. The common ground is that it starts from silence and then it's going to reach the maximum volume. Now, depending on the nature of the sound, not all frequencies will be loud, maybe just some of them. So these spectral devices, they look at the spectrum and the frequencies. And as they go in, the different bands will be assigned to the different blocks that we have right here. And we have three different blocks. It's going to be the quiet, the mid and the loud. I have a tiny little clip right here playing one single note. If I bring the, the filter all the way up, it's going to sound like this. And what I want to do, just to show you how this works, I'm going to bring the threshold. We're going to talk about this and we are going to be bringing the threshold down and I'm going to go all the way down on the filter. So how this works is that it's going to detect the different frequencies, the, the whatever sound you're trying to process. And right now it's completely quiet. We have almost full silence. We can see that there's something going on right here, but we don't have much. As I keep going up, since more frequencies, the frequ most of the frequencies are just quiet, all the frequencies that are quiet, they will belong to the quiet block and we have it in green. As I keep going up on the cutoff, more frequencies are going to be, you know, just louder and they will transition to the next block, which is the mid, the mid block, this one, the yellow one. And the same principle will apply to the loud. As we open the filter more, more frequencies will cross, cross over to the loud part. And now we can hear something. And notice this is still really quiet. If I keep going up and up and up, we're going to get to a point which is the maximum peak, you know, the maximum volume that we have right here. Now, since I'm using a saw and I'm playing a key, this peak, this frequencies right here, they belong, you know, to pre pretty much the main key I'm pressing. But since they are loud, they cross over the threshold of the loud and they will belong to the loud block. The ones that are not crossing over, they will stay on the mid block. And the ones that are, you know, super soft, that were low in volume, they're gonna stay on the quiet. And okay, so this is how it works. You bring some sound, whatever sound, and some frequencies, they will belong to the quiet, some frequencies will belong to the loud because they are loud frequencies, and some other ones are gonna stay in the middle. These blocks will separate whatever frequencies that belong to each of the categories, right? That's how it works. In this case, my synthesizer is playing one key and uh, it's using a saw, so there's no movement right here. So the frequencies that belong, that belong to loud, they will always stay on loud and the other ones will always stay on the mid or quiet. Now, uh, of course, this is not what you usually get on a real sound. If I, I have some chords right here, so if I play it, notice that some frequencies, they will go over to the loud, then they go down. There's a constant movement between the different blocks and the different frequencies. Sometimes they will belong to the loud or mid or quiet, depending on, you know, what you're trying to process. And this is what this, you know, device is all about. Let's go back to the synth. Now, these lines are going to be the threshold. Right here, you can decide what which frequencies will belong to loud, mid or quiet. If I take this one, which is the loud one, and go all the way up, I'm pretty much saying that the frequencies they need to get over right here in order to cross to the loud part. And right now, if I solo the loud, we have nothing, right? Because we have no frequencies that go over the, the loud. But we do have some mid and we do have some quiet. And again, if we want to make everything belong to the quiet, we just move the threshold, right? And right here, we decide which frequencies will belong, you know, where. 
You can double click the thresholds to bring them down to whatever you have by default. And right now, again, it's very quiet. If I go up, we're going to get more. All right. So there you go. So uh, each of the channels, they can do different things. Right now, I'm going to be putting some things on the quiet, some things on the mid and some things on the loud. So you can solo each part. You can go up in volume of those frequencies or you can attenuate them. Also, you can pan them to the right and to the left. And you can do the same thing for the mid. Maybe they're just too loud and you just want the other ones. And then you just blend whatever it is that you want to do. Right? So you can do the same thing on pretty much all the other blocks. It's volume and then panning. I'm going to double click to reset. And what you can do, you can click on this icon just to disable the channels. And you just get the loud. And you can even, you know, click this one and you get pretty much nothing. And then click it back to get them back. Another thing that you can do is that you can bring to each of the channels, you can bring effects. So if I solo this one, solo the loud one, I could maybe go right here and just bring a delay. And we are going to be only delaying the loud parts and not the mid or quiet parts. And I wanted to bring a different delay, not this one. So now if I bring everything back, the loud, it's using a delay. If I move the fader or the cutoff, notice that we get the delay. But it's only happening on the loud part. It's not happening on the other ones. All right, so you can bring different effects to the different parts. And this is how this works. Now, then you have the other options. We're going to talk about them. But essentially, uh, this is it. You just select your threshold. You find or you decide what is going to be loud, what is going to be mid, and what is going to be uh, quiet. And then you just, you know, manage your gain, your panning. And if you want to process the different blocks, you can with effects. All right, so now we need to talk about the knee. We know about the threshold, we know about the channels, you know, the loud, the mid, and the quiet. Now, how they cross over is going to be this section we have right here, the one that says 6.0. This is the value that you get by default. And then you have the rise and the fall. We're gonna talk about this. So I'm gonna be playing that single saw that we get. And I'm gonna be adjusting this so we can get something on the quiet, something on the mid, and something on the loud, right? Something, something like that. There we go. So, okay, so the knee is going to decide how everything is going to cross to the next block. I'm going to go all the way down on the, on the, on the cutoff, and then I'm going to go all the way down on the knee. Remember how this works. Now we have some frequencies that will go to green, uh, to yellow, and to red. If I go up on the cutoff, some frequencies again, they will transition from green to yellow, and we can see that the transitioning is very fast, super fast. If I keep going up, is the same thing. As soon as they touch the red line, they will become, you know, part of the loud. And this is how it works. Now, how this crossing, this crossfading works, or how hard it is, is going to be this value, the knee. If you're all the way down, it means that the transitioning to each of the blocks is going to be very fast and super hard. If I go the other way, I'm going to be using just the loud. If I go to 24, it means that the transitioning is going to be super smooth. Again, if we try this, the green one is going to be super fast, you know, the green to uh, green to yellow. And then notice that I'm touching, like we did before, the red, but it's not changing colors. It needs a little bit more in order to change. And notice the transitioning is really smooth. We just don't get red right away. It needs a little bit more in order to go to full red. All right, so this is the knee. This is how it works. It adds a little bit of resistance to the frequencies before they can be they can be part of the different blocks. I'm gonna go back to default on all the settings by double clicking, and then we have the rise and the fall. And all the settings are just really related to each other. The threshold will decide which frequencies will you know go to the different uh, you know the different blocks. The thre the knee is going to decide how hard or how they use, how smooth. The transition is and then again we have the rise and the fall now just to show you how this works i'm gonna go to rise all the way down and the fall all the way down i'm gonna start with the rise we're all the way down but i'm gonna do the opposite i'm gonna go all the way up now if i play a key notice that everything is green right so why the f 
everything is green. So if you think a compressor, for example, the rise is gonna be like the attack. How long will the frequencies need to stay up before they transition to the different blocks? In this case, everything stays on green because it takes a long time for the frequencies to be recognized and to be transitioned to the next blocks. If I play press and hold, it takes some time. So it's like an attack control on a synthesizer. Just to automate this, I'm going to bring an LFO. I'm going to attach it to the LFO. I'm going to be playing that clip. All right, so that's what we get. Now, notice that the LFO is going up and down, so we get quiet and loud. Now, since the LFO is super fast and the rise, which is the attack, is all the way up, it's super slow. We don't have enough time to transition to the different blocks. In this case, we just need to go down on the rise and some frequencies will transition a little bit better or faster to the different blocks. Right? It doesn't matter if it's fast now. We are getting some loud and some mid. And you can see the levels right here. If I go all the way up again, we just, all, you know, we get pretty much nothing. We only get quiet and a little bit of the loud. So the rice is going to handle that. It's going to be super hard, the transitioning, or it's going to be super smooth. Right? If I double click it, the default value is going to be two, which is, you know, pretty fast. Now, then we have the fall, and the fall is the opposite of the rise. If the rise is the attack, the fall is going to be the release. So when I play a key, again, the rise decides when the, sounds end, the sound uh, goes in, how it's going to be going through uh, the different uh, blocks. So when I release a key, it is going to go silent. These frequencies will go down. This is what the fall is going to manage, how they will transition when the sound goes down. Now, if the fall is all the way down, it means that it's going to transition super fast. But if I go all the way up, it's going to take a long time. Notice that we get red, and when it goes down, we still get red. It's super slow. The transition is super slow. Now, let me just do something. I'm going to bring a new LFO, but this one is going to be a different LFO. I'm going to use a classic LFO, and I'm just going to bring maybe a square, and I'm going to go slow, so we can have a, sl you know, a slow type of uh, LFO. And I'm going to be mapping this to the out of the synthesizer. So I'm going to go down in volume of this one, and if I play that clip, it's going to be, you know, super loud, and then going down in volume. Right? Okay. So what I want you to see, to see is that the fall is super slow. I'm going to go all, it's all the way up. So when the frequencies, they transition from loud to, you know, not so loud, they're still in red. They belong to the loud. And then when we it goes down, they still belong to the red one. So this is the fall. It decides how it's going, how smooth that transitioning from the different blocks is going to happen. If I do it super fast, when it goes up, it's red, and when it goes down, it's just it's quickly changing to the other block, which is mid in this case. All right, red, yellow, super fast, red, still red. If I make this slower, it's gonna, they are gonna transition, but it takes all, you know, a little bit of time. Again, if you think about this um, in ADSR terms, it's like the release, what's gonna happen when, you know, we release it how smooth it's going to go down. So right here at the bottom, you have a different option, which is going to be called the tilt. So if you don't know what the tilt is, it's going to be something like this. This is a tilt. So when you boost the lows, it's going to go down on the higher frequencies. And the same principle, if you go up on the higher frequencies, is going to attenuate the low frequencies. This is what a tilt is. All right, so let me show you with something a little bit more real than a one single tone from a synthesizer. So I'm going to be getting this down, so some frequencies, maybe this ones are going to be on the loud, the other one is going to be, uh, you know, the rest is going to be a mid and quiet. Super cool. Now the thing is that the tilt, remember how it works. If we can boost the lows, it's going to bring down the highs, or we can boost the highs and it's going to bring down the lows. If I go down to negative 6, notice that we get a lot more red on the lower frequency, on the lower area. This means we are sending more of this, of the lows, to the loud. On this, with, you know, with this example, with this quartz. If I go the other way around, go the other side, 
now more higher frequencies are going to the loud. And if we solo this, we can just clearly see it. If I go all the way down, we have less in the loud. Because we are just, you know, feeding less. But to the other side, we have more of the highs. And like I said before, all of this controls the threshold, the need, the rise and the fall, they are all connected. What if I want to bring a little bit of resistance to the different frequencies? This is gonna, of course, bring less to the loud now. Alright, so everything works. Everything's connected. Now we have a couple more options. We have the relative loudness mode. If I play it back, right now it's off, right? We, we don't have it. But this is like a normalizer, so everything uh, is adjusted so uh, the peak can be at the very top. So I'm gonna click it and notice that everything goes up, so we have the peak right here. And of course this will affect how it works with the different blocks. And even the threshold moves, of course. Alright, so I'm gonna get out of this. Now if you click the device and you go to the panel, you're gonna see that it says Spectrum Display Pre and Post. Now, if I, again, play this back, whatever we see right here is going to be pre, so it means pre-effects. Now, for example, if I take some of the frequencies and make them really loud, it makes no difference on this display because this is post, right? So we are seeing what happens before we boost the quiet. And that's fine, right? Now, what if I wanted to see what's gonna happen, what happens, or how we see this if we go up on loud, we go to post, and now we can see that everything's loud. If I go down, we can see that the loud is gone. So again, this is super useful because we can visualize what is going on with the mids, and what is going on with the quiets and the louds. Which is completely different than pre, right? And this again applies if we are using some effects right here on the different blocks. Alright, so now that we know how the threshold, the rise, the fall, the tilt, and everything else works, how, you know, how can we use this? Now, how is this uh, device useful? Now, we can use it for mastering, we can use it for mixing, we can use it for creative purposes, uh, we can use it for a bunch of things. Now, there's no right or wrong right here. Now, for example, I have some uh, hats, or maybe shakers. And it's pretty harsh, like pretty, pretty harsh. So I can use the loud split just to attenuate this. I'm gonna go down so we can get those harsh frequencies. We can see it right here and we can even tilt it just to get more of the, uh, the of the, you know, the harshness. And the harshness is gonna be right here. Then we have the mid, so I can go down and remove the harsh, All right? And we are using it as a mixing tool. Super harsh, a lot more smooth. Just by doing that. We can do it for the opposite. I have some drums right here. It's a very roomy, you know, type of sound. Right? Cool drums. Now, I want to get more of different parts. Maybe if I solo the quiet, I want to get more of the room. So I'm gonna be bringing this down and then bringing it up. We get a kind of a lo-fi type of room. Maybe we bring less of loud, and we are just making it just duller. Now all this, you know, plays a part. If I go up on this one, it's maybe too much. I go down, we just get, you know, the noise or just the floor noise. Now remember, we can adjust the threshold and how everything goes or moves through the different parts. And we can even play with the rise and the fall. If I want, notice that it's super, super, the transitioning is super fast. I can maybe make it a little bit smoother. And if I play it with and without, it's a completely different sound, like a different clip. Now, can we use it in a more creative way? 
Yeah, and I'm going to do something quick because this video is just, you know, <laughs> it's getting too, it's getting really long. So, uh, you have a pad right here, and this is the sound I get without the loud split. It's just some pads. And I'm going to be turning this on. So, remember that when it moves, we can target the different frequencies that we're going to be getting some things on the loud, some things on the mid, some things on the quiet. I'm going to enable the relative... Uh, you know, loudest mode. Now, some of the frequencies are going to be in red, and now everything is moving, right? Okay, so we could do something simple, like, I don't know, bringing a course, for example, just making the higher frequencies part of the course. If I turn it off, Just flatter, right? And this is because of the course. But now we are just doing it to the higher frequencies. Now, what if I want to maybe, I don't know, bring something to the lows? Now, maybe I can go up on the higher frequencies. So now we are going to be getting more of that. Maybe a little bit less from mid and a little bit more from low. And I can just maybe bring a delay. And I'm going to do a delay plus because, you know, it's a really cool device. I'm going to close it. And with this one, we can maybe do a little bit more feedback and use something that gives us more sound. And maybe go up in the mix. Why not? Now, notice that we get a texture in the, in the back right now. And it's going to be what's going on in the quiet. But it still, you know, stays very low. Because the higher frequencies, the peaks, are going to be right up, up there. Right? So it's a very useful device. Especially if you use it on a more creative way. If I turn it off... It's different. Now remember to compensate always, you know, compensate for the gain. Maybe the mix all the way down, all the way up. We didn't discuss this. This is nothing. But if I go down, we can just blend the process signal, which is whatever we are doing right here. But just, you know, make a nicer plant. Now, what if I wanted to do maybe something to the mids? This is what we get on the mids. Maybe I can bring... Why not? Uh, an LFO. And I'm just, you know... Uh, Fooling around right here. I'm not doing anything very specific. And maybe we can have the mids move. Again, I'm just experimenting right here. Alright, so let's unslow. Alright, super cool. If I turn it off, it's pretty dull, pretty dull if, in, in comparison. All right. So, okay, so I'm going to stop it right here because this video went too long and I didn't want that, but, you know, it just happened. All right, so hopefully you learned something on this one and it was fun. So uh, remember to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you want to buy me a coffee just to say thanks, you can. Go to the links at the description and you have PayPal, you have Patreon and you have YouTube. Thanks if that is your thing. Right. So thanks for watching and see you on the next one.